I've wasted countless hours searching for that perfect app, tool, or system only to find that I've completely forgotten about it just a few days later. So these days, I make sure success happens to me by automating things as much as possible. Hey, I'm Spencer, and I like to make optimal feel easy. So in this video, I'll show you some of the most life-changing automations I use on a daily basis. I've put my favorite one first, so we can dive right in. Here's an automation that allows you to add events to your calendar and simultaneously create an alarm for that event. It's great because in some scenarios, you just know a regular notification is bound to slip through the cracks. For example, a notification I receive while I'm at my desk is almost sure to work, but odds are I won't notice if I get one while I'm trying to get my kids out the door in the morning. So here's how it works. If I'm adding something to my calendar and I want to simultaneously create an alarm for that event, I just type the word alarm into the notification field and then behind the scenes, an alarm gets added to my clock app. Now the shortcut itself is a bit complicated, so to make things easier for you, I've added a link to the shortcut in the description. As I've set this up, the shortcut will find all of the calendar events in the next 24 hours where the location is set to alarm. Then it will create a calendar alarm for each of those events and the name of the calendar event will become the label on the alarm. If you run the shortcut multiple times, it could add the same alarms over and over again, which gets really annoying. So to prevent this, I've set it up so that before it creates an alarm, it will check to see if there are any alarms for that event already. If there are, then it won't add another alarm. This introduces some limitations that I'm willing to live with, but you should be aware of them. If you move the event, the corresponding alarm will not update. It will only create one alarm if you have two events by the same title within 24 hours, and if you delete an event, the corresponding alarm will not be deleted automatically. If you're desperate to see a more complicated version of this shortcut that addresses some of these use cases, then let me know and I'll put one together for you. Or if you're feeling particularly industrious and want to add some of these enhancements yourself, then let me know what you come up with. Now, if you've already downloaded the shortcut, you can of course trigger this manually, but the real magic comes when we turn this into a true automation. So tap on the automation tab at the bottom of the shortcuts app and press the plus icon to create a new automation. This page lists all the options that can trigger our automation. So scroll down and select the one that says app. The app we want to choose will be calendar and we want this to execute whenever the calendar is closed and we want to select run immediately, then tap next. Now we'll find the shortcut. If you've just added it, then it should be right at the top. It's called convert events to alarms. Just tap on it to complete the setup. If you want to give it a test drive, open up the calendar, add an event at some point in the next 24 hours, and then set the location to alarm. When you're done, head over to the clock app and you'll see that the alarm was indeed automatically added. I actually just used this this morning to help myself remember to send extra clothes to my kid's daycare. Hopefully you find it helpful as well. Call it ADHD, low willpower, or whatever you want, but between impulsive spending and forgetting to log my transactions, staying on top of my budget has always felt impossible. But now, staying connected to my budget is as easy as tapping to pay with my iPhone. This automation turns paying for something, logging it, and reflecting on it into one seamless action. Let me show you how to set this up using my preferred budgeting app, YNAB, which is short for You Need a Budget. But don't worry though, this works with any budgeting app that integrates sufficiently with iOS shortcuts. First, create a new automation, select the transaction trigger. This works best if you're using just one card, so make sure to select a single card from your Apple wallet and toggle the automation to run immediately. Using the transaction trigger is key because it gives us direct access to the transaction details, which we'll use later on in the shortcut. Tap next and create a blank automation. Search for your budgeting app, in my case YNAB, and tap add new transaction. Here's how we can configure it. Set the amount to shortcut input, but remember, the shortcut input contains several pieces of information and we just want one part of that. So tap it again and select amount specifically. For YNAB, I leave both the payee and category blank because YNAB will automatically recognize payees based on my location and suggest categories based on how I've categorized previous purchases. Finally, select the account or card this transaction corresponds to. The next time I tap my card, my phone will automatically start logging the transaction for me. I can make changes or add a note if I want, but for the most part, all I really have to do is hit save. 
In the case of YNAB, I immediately see how much money I have left in that category for the month. Because logging the transaction and reviewing my balance is now all part of the purchase process, you may find that, like me, you become a bit more budget conscious on a moment to moment basis. By the way, if you like these sorts of tips, then I'm sure you're going to love my free guide to the top free apps to dial in your morning routine. You can check that out via the link in the description below. Let's talk about what I call the super notification. Has this ever happened to you? You realize using your to-do list could change your life. You know as long as you look at it frequently, you'll always stay on track. But then you never check it. It's frustrating, and if you haven't given up, maybe you've tried alarms, alerts, or calendar notifications to try and remind yourself to check your to-do list more frequently. But let's face it, sometimes you ignore those notifications. You're not near your phone when you get them, or you miss them altogether. What if there's a better notification? A super notification? Check it out. I might find myself using all sorts of different apps on any given morning. For instance, I often like to check Kijiji while I wake up, but with the super notification, whenever I close that app, I'm suddenly whisked straight back into reminders. And the same goes for plenty of other apps. When I'm done checking the weather or checking my email, I could find myself staring at my to-do list again. Instead of relying on a notification, which is easy to miss, you'd get a gentle nudge towards your to-do list at the exact moment you're likely to notice it most. Like I said, I call this the super notification, and you can customize this pretty easily to funnel yourself toward whatever app you choose. I personally use this to funnel myself back towards my morning routine, but for the sake of simplicity, I'll set this up to funnel us back towards reminders. Okay, here's the setup. Open shortcuts on your phone and go to the automation tab. Tap the plus icon and choose create personal automation. Scroll down and select app. Next, choose the apps that you frequently use. For example, you might select clock, Gmail, and Safari. Set the automation to run when an app is closed. Trigger the automation immediately and tap next. Now let's define what happens when this automation is triggered. At its simplest, all you really need to do is just add the open app action, then select reminders. The only problem here is that now your super notification is going to be operating all day, which will likely get old pretty quickly. So let me show you how to tie this to a focus mode, which gives you a bit more control over when this occurs, and I find it allows me to opt out pretty easily on any given day. For the sake of time, I'll assume you already have a focus mode set up you could tie this to, but I'll use my setup for illustration purposes. I have a focus mode that runs every morning called post sleep that helps me get through the morning routine. So I'll find the get current focus action and then add the if action. I'll set this up so that if the name of the current focus is post sleep, then I'll open the app reminders. Otherwise, we won't do anything. Now, anytime you close one of those pre-selected apps, without missing a beat, you'll be redirected to your to-do list app. If on any given day you want to opt out of this pattern, then you can simply turn off that focus mode. And of course, feel free to experiment with different apps, conditions, or times of day to suit your needs. Do you ever get frustrated when your iPhone screen rotates around unpredictably? Most of us just leave the orientation lock toggled on to prevent this, but then we run into apps that sometimes work better in landscape mode. It's definitely a first world problem, but manually toggling the orientation lock on and off all the time drives me nuts, so let me show you how to automate this and make your life just a little bit easier. To set this up, you'll need to create two separate automations. Open the Shortcuts app, go to the Automation tab, and tap Create Personal Automation. For the first automation, select App as the trigger. I usually keep orientation lock turned on for daily use, but for some apps, landscape mode can be super helpful. And for those apps, I want it to be able to turn off automatically. So choose whatever apps you want to use this for, make sure is opened is checked, set this to run immediately, and then tap next. Add an action by searching for set orientation lock and set it to turn off. This ensures that when you open one of these apps, orientation lock is disabled, so you can fully use their landscape functionality. Tap done to save. Now, if I check, you'll see my orientation lock is on, but as soon as I open YouTube, it automatically turns off. No manual toggling needed. Next, we'll create a second automation to re-enable orientation lock whenever you close one of those apps. Go back to the automation tab, create another personal automation, and again, select app as the trigger. This time, check is closed and choose the same apps as before. Set this to run immediately and then tap next. Add an action for set orientation lock and set it to turn on. This will make sure orientation lock is re-enabled once you leave those apps. Tap done to save. 
And that's it. Well, this isn't a perfect solution for every situation. It at least lets you specify default behaviors for your apps and cuts down on some of the frustration of manually managing the orientation lock. I've recently learned a lot about limiting evening light exposure to optimize sleep. And I've even installed smart lights all around my house that turn red one hour before bed, allowing me to wind down effectively and still maximize my melatonin release. I'll try to release a video on how I set this up, but for now, let me show you how to set up a shortcut that dims your phone flashlight far below its lowest setting. If you don't already know, you can change the brightness of your phone flashlight by going into the control center, long pressing on the flashlight icon, and selecting the dimmest option. But in the middle of the night, this is still way too bright, so we can set up a shortcut that we trigger using the old double back tap feature, which unlocks an even dimmer setting on your iPhone flashlight. Here's how to set this up. Open shortcuts and tap the plus icon to create a new shortcut. Then tap the search bar and search for set flashlight. Then tap it to add it to the shortcut. Then tap the blue text that says turn and change it to toggle. This will allow us to use the same shortcut to turn the flashlight on or off. Then tap the blue caret on the right to see more options and turn the slider all the way down. Preview the shortcut by tapping the play button in the bottom right and you'll see that it turns the flashlight on and it's at an extremely low dimness. It's important to name this shortcut before moving on to the next step, so I'll name mine Nightlight. I'm still using an iPhone 12, but if you have an iPhone 16 or 16 Pro with that nice new action button, then you could set this up so that you could trigger this shortcut with the action button. Awesome, but if like me, you haven't upgraded yet, then we'll use the old double back tap feature instead. Open up settings, and honestly, the easiest way to find it is just to swipe down and reveal the search bar and type back tap. Once it pops up, Tap on double tap. Now this feature is part of the accessibility settings, so you'll notice some preset options for controlling the system or turning on accessibility features. These are great, but we're going to take it a step further and trigger a shortcut instead. So scroll down the list of options and select the shortcut you want. I'll pick night light since that's what we named it. Then exit out of these settings. Now when you double tap on the back of your phone, it'll trigger the shortcut. Double tap again and it turns it off. As a bonus, no matter how you've turned your flashlight on, if you want to turn it off, you can just double back tap and that will do the trick. Staying on the theme of limiting evening light exposure, here's an automation that super dims your iPhone screen and Apple watch face to optimize your sleep hygiene. We're going to create a new automation and while you could trigger this to occur at a specific time, I prefer the flexibility of tying this to a focus mode and in this case, I'll tie it to my pre-sleep focus mode. This method makes it easy to control when the automation triggers, and I've found it works more reliably for my needs. Make sure it's set to trigger immediately, and once that's done, we'll set up a simple series of actions for the automation to perform. I'll walk you through the finished setup to save some time. First, I turn on the Apple Watch Theater Mode option, which silences your watch, turns off the always on display, and allows you to control the brightness using the digital crown. It's perfect for minimizing distractions and light during your pre-sleep routine. Next, we'll dim your phone screen. Start with the set brightness action, and I like to bring it all the way down to 0%. If you wanna make your screen even dimmer, then here's where it gets interesting. There are some accessibility settings like reduce white point and color filters that we can activate from shortcuts that will even further reduce the intensity of bright colors and even tint your screen red. Both of these options can be customized if you go to settings and then accessibility options on your iPhone. You can tune them to exactly the way you want them to function and then we'll just simply toggle them on or off based on what you've configured there. Once these accessibility settings are turned on, you can easily turn them back off from the control center Alternatively, you could create another automation to reverse these settings in the morning. Hopefully now, if you have to use your devices during your evening routine, you will still maintain optimal sleep hygiene. Remember, you may be just a few small changes from making optimal feel easy, so why struggle? To level up even more, check out this video right here and don't forget to grab my free guide to the top free apps to dial in your morning routine. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.